Okay, so this is our June 7th um, teaching and learning UX call. And um, we're just uh, getting started with the agenda. So as far as announcements, uh, a reminder about SakaiCon, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, July 18th and 19th. So that's a little, little more than a month from today. And um, it's mostly online, but there are a few items that will be for the face-to-face -face folks only. Um, and registration is free now through June 30th. Um, the, we decided to, to charge it a little bit for late registrants just because there may be additional costs if there's a lot of like on-site people at the last minute. So, um, so starting July 1, it's going to be 150 to register. So you definitely want to get registered before the 30th if you haven't already, if you plan to attend either online or virtual. Um, and you can view the program at the, uh, the website there, um, sakailms.org events. Um, so we have sort of a standing item for S2U updates, but I don't see anybody from S2U here. <laughs> so I will take that off because um, I didn't confirm with Miguel that, that they were going to do it this week. So we'll jump straight to our main item, which is um, uh, another look at the portal UI. Um, there were a number of changes made based on some of the testing and the feedback that we got. So um, I thought we could take a look at it as a group and get your feedback, thoughts on anything um, on the, the latest and greatest that uh, seems good, bad, tw needs tweaking, um, you know, just kind of get your impressions. So if you'd like to go to, to Nightly yourself and navigate around to kind of get a feel for how it works, if you haven't already been there, I'm pasting the link in to the chat. Um, let me do a quick screen share so we can just kind of also look at it as a group. All right, so you should be seeing my screen. And, um, let me go ahead and log in. All right, so I'm using this one because I know it has some courses. Um, should have all the, the updates. Um, so when you first log in, we do have um, the home site expanded. Um, and uh, you'll notice that it's in the top position with the pinned um, underneath. Um, we've got some changes up here in the, the top nav. Um, the, the name of the site and the tool that you're on are listed here. And um, there were some little changes um, made here and just making the highlights consistent and that sort of thing. Um, that we did kind of a two-tone for the tool and, and site to differentiate between the two a little bit. And um, you'll also notice things like uh, the pinning, that was something that came up. The, these get pinned and unpinned instantaneously. So um, that got removed. Um, and if I pin it, it, it puts it right back in. So that I think, think is a huge improvement that you don't have to refresh. Um, Let's see. So Christina is saying that she likes having home expanded. Yeah, that was one of the things that I wanted to check with you guys because there was a JIRA. I think uh, Sean um, Horner. I, I had seen it. And that's yeah. why I was saying I like. I, I can understand. You like it better? I can understand the logic of having it collapsed, but mm -hmm. I also, since we use the evaluation stat system, and we've mm -hmm. got the tool added to the user's homepage, having it collapsed makes it just about impossible to see that. And it also makes it consistent with the site tools, which is mm -hmm. always, always useful too. Consistency is good. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Dave, what do you think? Open um, or closed I, I, on home? I, I, I think I could go either way. We also use the evaluations tool, but we also um, uh, we're we're hoping that our students are actually using the link that we send them in our uh, the notifications email that we send, and they just click on the thing and go to it. But still, we also include directions on how to get to that thing. And if it's collapsed, it's kind of hard. I don't know how much a engagement students have with the rest of the overview. 
other than, you know, f maybe from the first time they get into Sakai, they're sort of, you know, getting used to some things. Other than that, I don't know that they really do a lot in their home space, really. Um, uh, I think they're, they're, they're far more engaged in their courses. And so I could go either way, uh, having it expanded or not. Um, and if we really wanted to be technical and complicated, we could say, can we set a preference somewhere? Um, but I don't know. <laughs> I, do, I don't know that we need to do that. Um, uh, I, I think it could be open or closed as long as it's potentially collapsible and doesn't, you mm -hmm. know, command all that real estate over there all the time. Then, yeah, I think then that's fine. And that 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 particular uh, uh, user interface uh, collapse button seems to work functionally along with uh, other ones that we've we've seen before in Sakai. Okay, I think if the home will also collapse automatically as soon as a student goes to one of their sites. So it's not going to take up that real estate all the time just when they first go in. Yeah, that's right. actually good. Yeah, so if you go to a different course from there and it's already expanded, my assumption is, yeah, so it just it just jumps back up there. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I prefer it collapsed mainly because I don't like it using up all the real estate, but I can see your point if there's things under there that you do want them to see. I guess my biggest problem with having the tools exposed is that most of these tools don't get used. Um, yeah, that, that was students, my point earlier. Yeah, just, very uh, seldom they go to any of these. And some of them you can get to other ways, like you can get to preferences and profile and stuff here. Um, so I would prefer, I think, a shorter list I'd be happier be with. But... Argument for removing some of those entries over in that left list if they could be accessed elsewhere. I mean, there's, there's it's, it's good for redundancy in some cases. Um, and perhaps if there's accessibility that works within the context of the menu on the left versus the one on the right. Um, but I can see that uh, simplification of that left menu, maybe. That, that, that can be later, though, maybe. Especially like um, calendar and announcements, as long as they can be hidden and the synoptic tools still appear on the overview and or dashboard. Right. Yeah, because they've got them here. And, and students really can't do anything significant can either. Yeah, which is kind of what you have here. Yeah. Right. To me, that so redundancy, if, could, if we're trying if you to. Could hide them without affecting overview, that would be ideal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I say, if we're trying to, I mean, one of the things that I, I noticed in the new UI is that we're really trying to bring content center stage and provide navigation more peripherally, even more so. And so if we're trying to do that, then looking at the question of redundancy of content or means by which you get to that content may sort of fly in the face of trying to put that content center stage. So, you know, that idea that announcements are already on that overview page and, uh, you know, the calendar is already on that overview page. So, um, yes, uh, I think you can still do some cool things if you go to that left navigation, but um, I, I think that's something to be think thinking about. Adrian, do you happen to know if we remove a tool here? It I don't think it disrupts the overview, does it? Um, I think it does. Yeah, it does. Right. Yeah, I think he's right. Yeah, I think. Oh, I, I know. At least in the courses, overview is dependent on those tools being there. So, if in a yeah. course, if you remove the announcements tool, it removes the recent announcements. Yeah. But in a course, you can hide it. Um, right. I don't know if there's an equivalent of hiding, hiding it. In overview. Yeah, I don't, or in um, home. I don't know if there's a way to hide there. But if we're just trying to answer the question of whether or not we start it with open or closed, um, I mean, we can get really into the weeds here. But if we're just trying to answer open or closed, I think I can go either way. But I can see arguments for both open and closed. In our orientation, when we change our orientation, we'll probably tell people in your home section, look and, and expand the the over or expand your home section to see the, these areas. Uh, you know, we'll we'll do whatever we need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, this is a really small sample of folks, <laughs> but uh, but I guess we can just sort of leave it alone for now. Leave it open, and um, hopefully, uh, other people will um, adapt to that. And as an edit at the system level, you can also modify the, the tools that are listed. So um, granted, you might not be able to take calendar away, but maybe some of these others, I don't know um, if it would mess anything up to remove them from the list. 
Um, so we could play maybe. with that. <laughs> Sorry. What about preferences? Yeah, preferences I think can go because you've got it here. As long as yep. you can still get to it here, I don't see any reason for it to be there. Yep. yep. That's why profile, <laughs> profile too. I mean, you can go to profile here. Right. That's one of the things really that I need it there. If there was simplification of being able to tell people this is the way you got to do that. I mean, yes, it's great to have multiple ways of doing things. I know that it comes mm -hmm. back to you know, Office days and Windows days. But in some cases, it's nice to not be like, OK, so do I go to this preferences or is, do I go to this preferences? Because we do have some new users that are like, are they the same thing? Yes, yes, they are. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. taught. Um, speaking of windows i've taught our introduction to computer classes a couple times at the college and one thing that you know there's always three ways to do everything and you get to pick which way is easiest for you for that point in time sometimes that confuses people more sometimes everyone just wants there is one way to do something and this is it yeah well i would definitely advocate for removing these two links because I don't think it would hurt anything and there's other ways to get there and it would shorten this list a little bit. Um, and usually you're not going to have overview and dashboard. We have it here because, you know, we were kind of looking at dashboard. Um, but typically I would say you would have one or the other. You probably wouldn't have both, um, at least at the home site level. Earl, do you have any thoughts on this question of whether or not home should be collapsed or expanded upon login because there was a jeer about having it collapsed so that you could see the pinned sites better because especially on a, a smaller screen um you know it tends to be further right, that's down. what i was going to ask yeah that was what yeah. i was going to ask if you can yeah you mean it. by default right like yeah somebody... I, I, so to be honest i think that um, something like that is a very uh, user specific kind of uh, thing. Preference. Preference, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think, I think in the future, in the future, <laughs> if we had a way um, similar to like pinning, right? Because home would, oh, I'm guessing, you know, home is always there. Right. Yeah, home is um, per permanently pinned. Right. So that's a great thing. So instead of having a pin, but have something like if you're looking at the sites below how they're pinned, instead of having a pin, have some have just the toggle there that is where, you know, it's open or closed or some I don't know maybe maybe or maybe a preference or something to say. Well, I mean, you can collapse it. Oh, you can collapse um, it. So yeah. Yeah. It's so just on, on first login. And it, and it, it collapses kind of, when you visit a class, too. Yeah. So when you go oh, to well, the then next I, site, Then I think it makes sense to have it open right away. Because if it's going to collapse anyways, once you click on something, mm -hmm. that makes total sense. I, I think what doesn't make sense is logging in and everything is collapsed. That's you know what, what I'm, I'm worried about. Because then it's, you don't see any of the tools you're familiar with. You're kind of lost for a second. And okay. not only that, it forces you to have to click something, right? Like, even if it is in home, I mean, I, I get maybe you don't want to go to home. I get that. But that's not going to that's not going to cause you any grief, I don't think. Yeah. Right. Anyway, that's my opinion. I, I think I would leave it open um, okay. as like the default, you know, what matter of fact, I would say it like this when nothing is I would look at it like this when nothing is selected right so meaning no other course site is selected um which means it would be expanded um then that should be the thing that is expanded okay something like all right. that all right so you guys have convinced me <laughs> so anyway, what i'll, I'll argue, do i want to argue for the other side though Oh, go, okay, for go, go for it. Go for I, it. Go for I'm it. Not, not arguing, but I, and Earl, I can see your points um, and I appreciate those. I'm also concerned thinking about the large number of our current users that will go from what they're currently used to in 21 or 22 and then jumping in here and then like, okay, where are my courses? They're not on the top and I'll have this stuff on, on the left. And so because that navigation, that, 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 that which they are used to, um, 
is is now changed and the larger number of our i think the percentage of number of users is students and we're trying to acclimate students to a change then them having very little to do in the overview home section but more to do with getting into their courses and having those buried yes i do get the point of well as soon as you click on a course then it's going to be there um i i, I wonder about that um but like i don't think there's a right and a wrong i just think it's a hmm we can go either way and and we'll I, i'm not gonna like you know sell the farm on this but yeah yeah no i hear you and, um, I, and well, I understand one thing and this is not something that we're going to be able to roll out for 23 but this was something that i kind of had in the back of my mind because it was in some of our earlier work with the dashboard is um the the initial concept was that the dashboard would be the first tool instead of overview and that dashboard would have um, course cards. So there would be like a widget or something on here where you would have like a card for each course that you're taking. So that when you log in, you would get kind of front and center your list of courses within your home area. Um, now that didn't really materialize that way. Um, and we're hoping to add it later, but, and you know, obviously it's not there now, but you know, if dashboard does replace overview and takes over that first tool spot, then it would be a little more apparent to people which courses um, they have when they log in. So yeah, that's that that would definitely be an improvement then. And that would actually make my argument completely moot. Absolutely. Um, are the overview and the dashboard supposed to be both present by default uh, out of the box? Um, I don't think or so. Do I that? think I think just overview is by default. Okay. Um, is the that right, Earl? Uh, yeah, the dashboard the overview. Is added on the QA server for us for ease of us testers. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, we want we want to move to dashboard. Said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the The goal is to move to dashboard. It just um. Let me put it, let me, if I can sum up. Be blunt. That, that whole uh, move from overview to dashboard. It's one of those things that if you move precipitously before dashboard is like fully, fully, let's say, fully, um, and this is a, this is a, I have to be very careful about the words I choose here because I can <laughs> you know, easily, get yourself in trouble. Right. I could easily get in trouble. This. And, um, it's about, um, dashboard being fully, um, re, uh, meeting the expectations, um, of a user. Right. And so, when dashboard, I think achieves that, right? Um, yeah, and um, I, I could, I see some of the comments and I could preface this and say, none of these things, I would expect any developer to, even myself, to, um, to have understood at the outset of dashboard, right? And I know Adrian will probably agree to that like a thousand percent. Um, you know, you don't know um, ahead of time all of the things that are going to, you know, what that means. What What is, you know, all of the things there that meets a user's expectations, right? And so um, the goal is to get to that point. And the, reason why, and the reason why getting dashboard to that point or, you know, maybe rolling it out before we get to that point is we would essentially open ourselves up to a lot of issues really quickly, right? And um, and so it would uh, create a lot of, let's say, sort of grief on the part of getting the work done, but it would probably create a lot of grief on a part of the user as well, right? So that's the that's the uh, that's the sort of metric there that. Um, that we need to do and and dashboard has been getting there right it's 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 been making steps in that direction it's just um if we put it if we kind of make it front and center before it meets all of those expectations we get ourselves into a truck we get ourselves into a tough spot that's that's really what it's about 
Yeah, I, I think dashboard has improved quite a bit. Yes. And I, I don't think it should be experimental in 23, but I wouldn't put it in home by default either. Right. I would let people choose to enable it in home if they want to. Um, but there's a few things I think that could be improved and added to it, like the course cards and maybe, you know, some of the widgets. Um, and, you know, I know Christina has a thing about the message of the day being open by default, stuff like that, that I think would improve dashboard, make it a little more um, user friendly if you were to roll it out in a big way. Exactly. And that's, that's exactly like, like, I'll just take, I'll pick on Christina because we can and she loves it when we do so <laughs> <laughs> so I, I could i could put myself in christina's shoes and say okay say sakai 23 is coming out got all these you know all these you know significant changes and dashboard is going to replace overview and you know the, the world is going to be perfect right and and then what happens is christina starts getting you know a, lots of questions about you know a lot of questions about some things uh, like questions about, you know, uh, uh, when I'm in dashboard and I see this, does that mean this or does that, you know, and all of that stuff is going to come back to it. Now, we want that feedback. It's not that we wouldn't want that feedback, right? We would want absolutely all of that feedback and we would want to uh, uh, record all of that feedback in the form, um, eventually in the form of JIRAs and what we need to do, right? However, um, that, you know, putting, if you're Christina and you're put in that spot, you're really, she gets into a tough, she gets into a tough dilemma there, right? Because, you know, she's got to answer these questions. Uh, maybe there's some things that quite don't do what people are thinking they should be doing, right? And then, the, then she has to ask the community, then she opens up JIRAs and she does all of that stuff. And then, you know, and then it's, you know, kind of a, you know, there, there's, there's probably a lot of work that has to be done to get there. And so, um, and then Christina kind of has to deal with all of that, right? So it puts her in a really tough spot. So that's, that's where that's where this is. But the, the problem is, and I agree with Wilma here, is that we likely should be moving dashboard out of experimental. The only thing that's required for dashboard to get out of experimental, right, is for two institutions to be using it. And at least, um, it previously, because tools were course centric, uh, they require two universities to at least use it during a regular semester in at least uh in at least a single course and um where the um and they didn't um and they found the tool to be um let's see you know operating correctly you know free from defects and bugs and things like that right um just that's it that's like that's like literally all it requires uh to get out of experimental at least in the past you know now we could change those rules but um um you know that that, that would be a change in the rules in this case because dashboards like a home tool um you know it's a little different right um but we need to start getting it out there because we're not going to get the feedback if it's not out there either so there's there's that part of this too um so I, I agree that it probably shouldn't be experimental anymore, but we do need to, you know, sort of kind of cross those T's and, and things and just say, um, you know, no, nobody's really come forward to say, you know, yeah, we would, well, we would like, you know, you know, we, we would like to, you know, uh, move dashboard from experimental. We're going to put it into a certain number of, for example, uh, uh, home home sites, right? And like I said, because it's not a traditional tool, course tool, so right, so it's it's for home sites. So, well, well I mean, it, I guess it is it too. is a course dashboard too. So, so maybe the right idea is to start there with it. You know, is to start there couple, with. It. We've had a couple instructors use it for their classes, mm -hmm. and the ones who have used it have been perfectly happy with it. 
except for the biggest limitation that it can't be imported into another site. So when they're setting up then oh. their next semester, they have to manually recreate it. Right. Put okay. Put the image in, put the content in, change the layout. Okay. Well, that's 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 a very uh, uh, valid thing. Yep. So, so I mean, until it can be imported, I don't see it going mainstream for us. Right. And see that right there, Christina, that feedback that you just gave, that is exactly why we have sort of that experimental, like where it's got to be used in, you know, in at least two institutions and at least a single course and at least a course there free from, you know, sort of free from, um, you know, um, um, you know, I mean, I don't want to say every tool is going to be free from feedback. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm saying, but what works, what is there is working correctly. That's, that's yeah, really, that it's functional, about. right? That it's functional. Exactly. And that something significant is like, oh, by the way, this is like missing. And if I wouldn't, don't have that, then this tool is worth, you know, then this tool I can't use. Right. So like, as long as it's not something like that, then, then it, it, it totally doesn't need to be experimental anymore. I mean, it gets promoted out of experimental. And uh, that doesn't mean, right? That doesn't mean we like continue to fix things with it and we continue to improve it, right? Think of conversations. Let, let's switch the subject a little bit because conversations is different, right? And, but if you look at conversations, how do we get conversations out of experimental, right? It's the same rules, right? Uh, we need at least, you know, two institutions to use it in a course during a normal semester and that uh, it, it, you know, it functions and that there isn't something significant with it, you know, and that everybody, you know, and that it's, you know, people find it, you know, completely functional. When we get to that point, then conversation gets out of experimental, uh, just the same. What we need, what we need from the community is we need people to, you know, um, when these tools do get to a point, we do need like uh, people like institutions to step up and say, yeah, we'll do that. You know, again, it's one course in one semester. It's not like deploy it to all your courses in a semester, right? We're not saying that. Well, Dave says that they deployed dashboard to all of their courses. So there okay, you go. That's, there, there you go. That's great. <laughs> Dave, and that's fine. If if it, and that's fine. I'm not trying to say that dashboard wouldn't be ready for that. I'm not. Oh, no, I'm not no, saying I, conversations I wouldn't be ready I for agree that. With right? I do. I agree with you. Yeah, it's just to have that. The two institution thing is just to remove the bias, right? Because what works at one is so. Th think of it like this: in the past, there usually tools were uh, began at a particular institution, right? So like. Think of like the attendance tool that began at somebody's institution because that's what they wanted. So a developer developed a tool, right? And so there was always like one institution that was using it because they're the ones that had it developed, right? So the two institution rules to have that a little, it's like a check, like a checks and balances there that it does meet not just the needs of a particular institution that might have particular needs for this tool that it meets a little bit wider of an audience. So that's the that's the two institution rule. And literally the single course site in a normal semester, that's just to say, okay, it was used in a regular course. That's all, that's that rule, that's it, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's, not, it's not anything insignificant. I don't think the rules are anything significant from the past, you know, I mean, People could go back to the past and maybe dig up a few other things, right? But I would say these are the things that, for the people that have that have been around from those time periods, I would say these are the more significant sort of, like if you were to look at how we did things back then, that's how you would interpret them today, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm sorry if that was long, a little long-winded, but that's that's you know where we're at with um these experimental tools and we just need to get that to happen you know what yeah. i'm you know it's it's not well, anything I, I think... that wilma can say it's not anything earl can say it's not anything that adrian could say it's not anything i see matt's here now it's not anything that matt could say 
right? This is something that an institution needs to tell us, right? And it needs to be at least two. And I'm happy, Dave, that you guys are doing that. Yeah, well, I think there's at least two institutions that have been using Dashboard, at least in the courses. Um, because Dave says that they're using it. Christina's used it in a few courses. I think Dr. Chuck was even using Dashboard in his courses. Right. Um, so we have people using it. Um, but I also get Earl's point. If there's not feedback that's coming back that's specific, accurate, and timely back to developers about, oh, yeah, we, we added it. Okay, well, I don't expect the developers to jump into all of our instances and say, oh, look, they're using it. Oh, look, they're using it. Um, and, and providing and we the <laughs> feedback. Right. You know, right. Or, <laughs> yes, thank you. I appreciate that. And, but but your, your point is well taken. There's no sense in us being able to expect that things are going to come out of something that's an experimental, even if we're using it, unless there's specific feedback coming by way of that. Just like what Christina said, you know, that import process. Yes, we've experienced that same import process problem, and we've just adapted to try and, you know, get around it. It's not wonderful, but it works. But if we don't provide that set of feedback through JIRAs, then there's no sense in thinking, oh, it's ever going to come out of experimental. It's just going to stick there. And so yeah, we, we've, we, as, we as the user community have got to make sure we're providing that feedback into those JIRAs in timely, specific, um, and, and very, very detailed ways. I, I, think what, I think what we should do, and because we're talking about this, is I think we should create a JIRA just for moving a tool from experimental to, to production status. Um, I think that should just be a JIRA. And... Um, I think, you know, we need to get, uh, I, I think that's a good way to track it. Like just the decision of a tool moving from experimental to production ready uh, could be a JIRA and we could, and then people could uh, report back to that JIRA, you know, what their, you know, what their feedback is. That's a great idea. I will make a JIRA right after this. <laughs> yeah. I, I was so going to say, it, yeah, if you didn't, it. I would have made it, Wilma. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but we should do one for dashboard. We should do one for conversations. And um, we've got, I'm sure there's another tool out there. Is um, conversation still experimental? Yeah, it is. Huh. Yeah, okay. it still is. Okay, yeah, definitely um, for those two um, tools. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones. I don't know of any other ones. I know attendance tool is looking to go to core. So that would probably cool. go experimental. Like when it gets added to core, it'll become experimental. Really? That's funny. So it goes from it goes from core to experimental? And then it well, goes to... well, well, it's it, not core I, now. It's contrib now. Yeah, it's contrib. Okay, right that, that's, that's fine. It, that's interesting because I know we have been using the attendance tool for like three yeah, or the four fact years. That it, yeah, yeah. So we, our, a lot of our clients have been using it forever. No, no, no. That's okay. Yeah. But that that same feedback function of providing that feedback to developers and saying, hey, I mean, we, we you have no idea. If, I mean, and, and it's been great. We haven't had any problems with it at all. But you don't know that. Um, you know, no, no news is good news, but no news is also no news. That's true. Yeah, and it's likely, and again, whether a tool is experimental or not is not any, um, is not any um, sort of dig on the tool to say, well, it's not ready. You know, it's it's a it's more of an um, a check, if you will, to make sure that, you know, a tool is um, ready. You know, and I, I would I would uh, I think I would advocate that any tool that comes from contrib and goes goes into court, gets added to core should follow the sort of, you know, same rules as the other tools, you know. It just may get de-experimentalized faster because, you know, for like, let's say, a, attendance, you need two, inst two institutions already using it. All right. We got a couple right here. All right. And, and I, mind you, I wanted to, I just want to say one last thing about this is that any, any, uh, all of this is through config. Like anybody could change the config at their institution and say, this tool is no longer experimental. You know what I'm saying? All on their own. Um, any, because any institution is obviously, um, responsible, you know, they, they can make the choices they need to make. Right. So, so, you know, it's not something that the community has to, 
what I'm trying to say is, you know, an institution, it can freely make up their own mind about what's experimental and what's not, too. That's what I'm trying to say. Shoot, there could be a tool there now that's in core, and they don't want it to be uh, uh, used, and they can demote it. That, and I, I'm also saying that that's also a thing. Guilty. Right. There's just some tools that some institutions just say, you know, this tool's not for us. And so we're going to demote it. I, I killed our web content tool like the day we implemented Sakai. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's that's perfectly okay to do that. Dave, in our prior LMS, we had an instructor who had links to every single website he was having, every single article he was having students read on the main menu. Oh. I wanted to make sure there was no way on God's green earth that could be duplicated. Fair, fair, fair point. Very fair point. We don't have him or her. They don't work for us. <laughs> yeah, they, they could have just used lessons for that. <laughs> yeah, just like a page with links. Christina, right. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm thinking. I know my people, so <laughs> I took that ability away. No, that's good. That's really great that you know your people. Um, we do know our people, too. Um, we, since we're in a consortial instance, we actually leveraged it so that we could have a single page that's an HTML file publicly served that actually appears as the web content tool at every single site. So we can actually distribute content to every course without having to actually touch every course. That's why we retained it. So let me ask you this question, Christina. Are there links, uh, well, I say links, but are there tools in the left-hand side that are links to like, let's say important um, you know, other websites on the campus that you guys use? We have Are you a... talking about here? Yes. Or yep. like within a course? Within a course. Within a... Or not within a within course, a... sorry, no. In the, well, it would be, um, it could, could be in a course or could be in a home site, could be any of those. Well, remember that I there's the quick a... links, which I think is rarely used, but if there are institutional links like that, this is a good place for them. That's actually where we have them in the current 22 skin. We actually leverage okay, that okay. specifically. And it's prime. It's for two reasons. One, to say that every course has it. We also use it from an accreditation standpoint. So we can say the 24-7 help desk is two clicks away. Click, click. Um, right. So we do leverage that. Theoretically, it could go somewhere else. Because as that menu in the top right hand, the, the right hand kind of becomes wider, I don't know what's going to happen with that, that quick links. I guess it's going to be right there. So that's good to know. Um, so yeah. I don't know if that answers the question or not. Or... I do not it, it does. Not it, it does because you know web content was used for specifically for those kinds of links in the past. Yeah, yeah, we 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 were guilty of that early in like I think twelve. Yeah, sometimes those institutional web links were here, mm -hmm. but yeah. you had to do them at the system level to put them in people's home sites. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And it can still be done to this day, obviously. Um, uh, a lot of a lot of people, like for example, would um, uh, go into the um, student and faculty templates, and they would add in like faculty links, and they would go into the student template and add in student links. So there would be like you know faculty specific links and student specific links in the appropriate templates. Nice. And that, and that's how they would. Uh, distribute some of those, or I shouldn't say distribute, but that's how they would, you know, um, um, help people get to those places, you know, they they were important places, you know, for people to be able to, to access able to quickly. Add. Yeah, Earl, that's at the instance um, level, right? Uh, yes, you can, yes, yeah. that usually is done at the instance level. Yep. Okay, so I want to bring us back a little bit to the portal stuff, because we kind of went off on a um, tangent. But an important tangent. What so, when you have small um, groups? yeah. <laughs> so, are is everybody happy with the behavior? Because um, I'm noticing, like, when I click on the site, it's not taking me back to the first tool. Um, I think that was what people had indicated that they expected to it to kind of go back to the first item. Um, Agree. Yeah. 
I agree. So is that like, different? Is that different from the behavior that we had before, where it was like a steady state, where it would just be like, "Oh, you you want to go back here? That's fine. I'm just gonna take you back to the tool you're at." Yeah, it's a little bit different, but it seems to be what people expected. That yeah. used to be um, a feature, by the way, guys. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Yes, it oh would remember God. your last location, yes. so that you could go back there and pick up right where you left off. Yes. Yeah. What we found is that people don't remember what tool they were in. So when they go back and they're not kind of on the landing page, they get a little confused. Yeah. Especially right. for home, because in home, like if you're on preferences or something, it's just really not where people expected to land. Yeah, I think it's somewhat when disorienting. They... When you click back on home, you're like, go back to go, go back to the yeah. beginning start from the beginning and if it just right and the way that the breadcrumbs worked um is when you click on the breadcrumb it kind of resets it it does that mm -hmm. with the tool as well so it goes back to the landing page for the tool if you click on the title it goes back to the landing page for the site yeah, the, those are two but, separate things wilma yeah um, i know but the is, behavior is similar one is the last tool the last tool is remembered and mm -hmm. then the other thing is that um the uh like you're saying in the um breadcrumb like in the reset there the so every tool has its state right and so when you go back to a tool um you could technically go back to a last known state if the tool supported doing that right so yeah we, we don't we don't we're not saying we're not to doing implement that. that no 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 i'm, I'm saying is, that that's possible what that's what i'm trying to say I'm saying yeah, that but we don't want that. <laughs> right. And so so the option to reset that is clear the tool state. So think of it like this. Last known visited tool is one thing completely separate from the clearing of a tool state, the, the to, a particular tool state. So say you were in Samago, right? And mm -hmm. you um, um, navigate to some other tool the you know the last known tool is changed right because you just went from samago to say let's say lessons right so that changes mm -hmm. right so it kind of follows you that way it always it remembers your last tool that you were in but then as you're visiting tools each tool has its own state its own particular state that's particular to each tool and there are certain things that are remembered there some tools may not remember anything, and that's perfectly fine because that's the way the tool was developed, right? But other tools do remember things, and they do put things into the state. Um, so the reset button simply literally goes and says, let me clear this tool's state, like just clear it, boom. And mm -hmm. once it's cleared, it always would begin at the beginning again because there is no state associated with it. And once you start using the tool again, once it's been cleared, then it starts adding the state again, right? Until it's cleared again, let's say. Right. Now, I get that those are two different things. Okay. What I'm saying is from the end user perspective, it's a similar behavior because when you click on the title of the tool, you expect the tool to reset the state. Yeah. When you click on the title of the site, you expect it to reset to the landing page for the site, which I is see, for the, whole... the first item. Yeah, yeah. Right back to overview. That's what I would expect. We could probably make that happen. Yeah. There is a way to say clear all state in a site too. I believe there's an option. There's a way to do that as well. Which yeah, I'm with Wilma. Which Go mean ahead. it clears. So what it does is it clears all the state and all the tools for the entire site. It's just like instead of clearing individual tools, right? What mm -hmm. it does is it goes and clears all tools. But I would be with Wilma about clicking that up on the top in, in the in the home section. If you're clicking the home section for it to go back to, rather than I, I'm yeah. I'm on board with the same same behavior that uh, that Wilma has described about the home section. I think that that that's my expectation too. Right. Yeah, Adrian says he can't re reproduce it locally. Yeah, that, I think there there was a jeer about this. Andrea had commented on it, and I replied to it. Um, but it's not working like that on Master. So, but that's the way I think most users expect for it to work. Now, as far as clearing the tool, 
Um, I'm not advocating doing a, a, a complete site clear. Um, I think people expect that the tools will work pretty much the way that they're working now. Um, but when you click on the title of the site, it should take you to the first tool. Yeah, Adrian's local is cooler than trunk. <laughs> <laughs> I bet um, it is. All right. So is everybody happy with the rest of the um, UI changes? So we made home permanently at the top. Um, when you click into a site, it expands the tool list for just that site, but it keeps the sites in the same order. Is that what people would expect and prefer? I like keeping them in the same order because then I'm not having to try and track which one got changed. I get the idea of putting the most frequently or the most recently used one at the top, but uh, I feel like I'm going to have to relearn the sequence every time I... Like well, that, it's not. That, it's not putting them at the top. These stay in, know. The, in the order. Right. What I'm saying is from a, it feels like it mimics what we currently have in 22, which I know it's not in the same place, but mm -hmm. my sites in the top in 22 don't reshuffle themselves just because I was in a last site. It only happens if I pin and unpin something. So I think that mimics that behavior. So I'm not having to rememorize, you know, the sequence every time I'm in Sakai versus every semester. Right. It's a little still disorienting. Um, my brain, the first time I see it always does expect the current site to be up at the top. But I, from when I, from when it did that, I remember that was even more confusing. So I think it just is something that people need to get used to. Okay. Yeah. So it does usually show up in, at least in the frame. I don't know if it can be made to like scroll up automatically. I don't know if that's possible. Is it? It seems what I saw is that when you click on a site, it automatically kind of scrolls down to center it and its tools in that list. Okay. See, yeah. As long as, long as it's visible, I think that's the main yeah. thing. Because it's pretty obvious which one is selected. Yeah, let's just leave it the way it is. I think it, it's working. Um, if people complain about it, we can look into alternatives. But I think it seems to be working pretty well. Um, and you can always, you know, expand and collapse things independently over here. Um, it's not going to change on you unless you click into something. Um, Matt's asking if there's limits. And Adrian says there's no limit. So you could theoretically have, you know, 100 sites over here pinned. I don't know why you would want to, but you could. Um, but there would be a limit, right? Just like there's a limit now or? And is there no, somebody... he's saying that there isn't there one. Isn't. There's no limit. Oh my goodness. So wait a second. So I'm trying to think of people like me because I'm sure there's nobody <laughs> like me. Well, yeah, we'll well, I'm hoping, and I saw some people get, doing yeah. this. I'm hoping that people will use this filter if they have that many sites. Um, and I did actually see some people using the, the search filter here. Um, okay. That's good. Because I'm also thinking of people that are on mobile devices that yeah. may have, I mean, it's going to be far fewer numbers of people that are going to have over 25 or six sites or something of the sort that they're going to have to like mm -hmm. pay through. And, and, and who knows what they're doing on a mobile device that's going to require that much complication. But, you know, um, yeah, and the filter would be available too. So that, that's a good point. And, and they can always go and unpin sites if, the big scroll yeah. bothers them. Yeah. And then so we when you unpin, it does move it to recent. These do switch based on activity. Yeah, that's fine. But then, uh, so but there wouldn't be an indicator that there are so many sites over there or that they're over a certain number. It's just going to be like they're all over there. They're all over there. They're all there. You can pin as many as you want. It looks like you'll just get like one big list and you can drag them around. I'm kind of curious, does if you just do a regular browser find on the page and you have like, I'm going to make this up, 99 sites and they're listed on the left hand side, all is pinned. I assume the, the browser find would still find that on the on the page, like as an alternative. I, I, yeah, I would think so. Yeah, so I, I think it's fine. All right. So Sometimes are there any other? Too, like 
I was just going to say, sometimes you have to think too, like this is a great starting point. Like all of those other kinds of things that might be sub subtleties that, you know, maybe we want to do. Like I, I think not doing, like letting them surface, like again, like, you know, taking the, the sort of the uh, meaning, let's not just add features just because, you know, un unless we really know that, you know, that feature would be used, right? Like, like limiting pin sites or something. I, I would rather let it surface. So a, a thing like that would surface. Like it would come in as a request saying, hey, I want to be able to limit how many sites I have pinned or something like, or maybe some administrator would put that in or something. Um, you know, I, I think that's a good, I, what I'm trying to say is I think that would be a good thing not to implement right away. Yeah. Well, Adrian is saying they all get rendered, so it's not infinite scroll. So right. theoretically, it would be a deterrent <laughs> because you'd have to wait longer for your sites to load if you pin a million sites. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a there's obviously going to be the performance aspect of this. Right. And again, we wouldn't optimize that until it was needed. So uh, let me I, ask I can you imagine earlier, there's because I don't know I don't know if there's a Jira on this, but I remember we had talked about it. Um, currently, favorited sites will be pinned by default. Correct? Uh, I would say we need to test that. Okay, um, because I, I, I think say. that's what people would expect if they've got I believe their favorites. That is, I want to say I believe that's the case because the the attributes under the hood are the same meaning mm -hmm. we we didn't what adrian i'm am i correct in that or are they different we create new adrian's ones adrian's saying no we not. Different new ones. Ones. We, yeah we have a table we have a table now we're not using preferences oh okay is there a, no. a migration path <laughs> so then i'm gonna i'm gonna take back what i just said and say uh <laughs> wilma that no you're there is not going to be, there probably does not exist right now any path of, uh, or any correlation between the old favorite system and the new pin system. Okay. That's going to be but something we'll have, that we need to warn people about because yeah, they're we'll going to freak out. Java. Yeah. We'll have to write some Java to do that because preferences is all XML and like a big XML blob. And the pinned and recent stuff is actually hacking tables. So uh, yeah, I would have to write Java code to uh, to migrate yeah, the stuff. To migrate it, yeah. Which um, which actually maybe so okay easy. with not having a migration because it would be nice for people to start being like, oh, this is how you do that. I mean, I can see the ire mm -hmm. from people too. Like I can see both sides. But part of mm -hmm. me is like, it would be nice to be like, get used to the new interface and like, oh, this is how you do that. Versus yeah. right. oh, start with a clean slate. Like, it's good. I, I yeah. don't know. I can argue both ways. That's what Dave is saying. Ways. It's good practice. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It, yeah, we'll <laughs> new sites are pinned by default. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. If you add a user, if you add a user to a site, they get pinned. Okay. So that would answer the student use case like ninety percent of the time, because they always want to know where are my courses, and if they just got added to a site, it should be pinned. Um. So. Um, yeah, it might be okay. As long as we warn people that they're going to have to repin their favorites. Um, I think just, yeah, just most tell people, people that you've, they've been liberated. They've been liberated yeah. from the tyranny, the tyranny of their star side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, oh, so one, people, one other so, thing is we kept this, uh, hamburger here. Just, oh, that was interesting. What's going on there. Do you see that? That's definitely some sort of bug. It's supposed to be collapsing, but it, it's actually showing up on the it, other it, side. It collapsed a lot. That is yeah. weird. And it's uh, shoved it over yeah, to the that's, right. That's bizarre. Okay, so that's definitely a bug. Um, but we, we left that alone. Um, now, you do have these links up at the top so you know the site and the tool that you're in, even when the menu is gone. But to get to a different tool, you do have to expand the menu. So. Are people comfortable with that? Is that a good compromise? I like it. Christina, any thoughts?
it really yeah. helps to bring the content I, center I, stage I, even more so. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, the only thing that I wonder about that, and this is just a personal, like, you guys feel free to, sh like, just tear it up, but um, I thought, like, that the Sakai logo there, like, the menu button, I th I would have thought that the menu button would be in the black side, or and then the Sakai logo would just be in the blue side. Well, I think it's indicating that this side panel is going away, so it kind of, that's the panel that you're... Right. Working with. If it was over here, it seems like it'd be related to this content area. I see well, I think to saying. Earl's point, it could be it could be that you're clicking that in order to surface all of that content versus hiding the column on the left. I mean, I can, yeah, I can see. I mean, this this icon wasn't my top choice, but I left it alone because it was contentious. <laughs> Got so it. as long as it works for people, I see we leave it alone and see how it goes. Is there is, is there anything <laughs> more specific about the color? Because because we've got that column that's on the left now that helps to make that because the it's hot like it's just it's shaded. Kind yeah, of Yeah, I know it's just space. barely shaded, and the shade the shades the tones work well together. I get that, um, but I, I understand the point about how how is this related to the other pieces? Um, is that as obvious? And maybe just with use that will that will be the case. Because this is a big change for folks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just I, I just don't understand. A lot of people I don't, won't collapse, but but that's my. I just don't understand how the logo and that and that and that button are in the same block. Just it to me, it would seem like they should be separate. That's all. But it's not a big deal. It's just you know, it's not a big deal. It's just. I don't know. It just seems weird. Like if that was literally a button, not, not like a button looking thing, but if that was just shaded differently from the logo, I you think, mean this? um, what's that? You mean like yeah. an outline around it? Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Just that it was just separate from the logo. Like right now without hovering over it, Wilma, right? Mm -hmm there's no way to know that like they look together ish and i just would say like like let's say if the sakai logo was you know there and then that menu icon was just a different um you know just a different shade or something just a differentiate yeah. that's all that's all i'm saying you know just just seems a little and I'm guessing that's the this is the more mobile sort of menu e button is why it's is what it is, right? I guess I don't know. I had mixed feelings about this button. I would have preferred it down here in the menu somewhere, mm -hmm. but that's just me. Um, I don't want to impose. Maybe that plays into what preference. I'm saying, where that button just feels out of place there. Yeah. But I, I think we'll just leave it alone for now. And if people complain about it, we can make a Jira. But, yeah, I uh, won't. I won't, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't get I me won't. started on that button. I'm trying to avoid <laughs> getting sucked in. <laughs> but but that's a good point. We but, but this is a good point that where you know I wouldn't advocate changing it now at all. Yeah. I would say this would be something that uh, you know um, uh, just surfaces as time goes yeah. on. You know, people will say, yeah, that's not the best place for that. Or, yeah, that's not whatever that should be. You know, th I've got a better idea for that. You know, have and we that looked at putting forward. it on the other side of the logo? Yeah, that was one of my iterations. And Adrian knows I went round and round with this button. I tried moving it over there. I made it like an arrow, more like thing collapse. I hear music. <laughs> Uh, but I think, yeah, I think that's the key point, Adrian. Um, this is good enough for our RC1. Um, so we can still kind of mull over some of the fine tuning, but um, I think I think we're in a good good shape for our RC1. Yeah, we don't want more changes right now. So it's just yeah. to advocate. Like, there's no more changes, like, that Yeah, apart from that with. crazy bug with the swapping of the yeah, menu. Yeah, that needs to be fixed, yeah. That's a bug, but, though. That's not a yeah. design. Right. That's not a that's not a design <laughs> feature. 
Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys taking an in-depth look at Portal again. Um, and I know we ran over a little bit, so I apologize for um, encroaching on your lunch hour. Um, we do have uh, a couple of meetings coming up that we may need to um, cancel. So June 21st is our next one. It's in two weeks, which is open if anybody has any suggestions for topics. But July 5th, um, I'm not going to be available, so we can either cancel it or we can move it to a different week. And July 19th is um, one of the days of SakaiCon, so we definitely need to cancel, but we could, again, push it to the following week if you guys want. Um, so do you have a, a gut reaction now, or we can talk about it more at our next call? Not hearing any strong opinion. So we'll, we'll talk about it again um, on the 21st. Maybe we'll have a few more people here. So um, anyway, so I don't want to keep you guys any later. But again, thank you very much for um, joining us today and for taking a, a close look at Portal. And I think it's in really good shape. So thank you so much, Adrian, for all your work on this, because I know you put in mega hours on Portal. And uh, you and Canal both did a lot of work on it. So thank you very much. Um, I think it's it's looking good. All right, take care guys. Have a great day.